Let's do it. Previously on Master Chef. Paula Dean popped out of a mystery box and played judge for a day. Put some south in your mouth. Leading to a tag team challenge that spun the competition. Put some south in your mouth. No, 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 they're to your left. Where? Where? Oh, oh my when God. Team Christine and Stacy were left at the bottom. This is the worst performance from both of you. Stacy was the one eliminated. No, it's okay. Sorry, Stacy, you gotta go. We got Christine. Isn't Chef. Dude, fastest skipper in the West, dude. Welcome. Please, all of you, come down to the front. Thank you. Top six, man. It feels unbelievable. There's only five people in my way of becoming the next Master Chef, so watch out. Good to see you all. The final six. I need to win this. This isn't something that I hope to do. This is something that I have to do. Today, everything you know about MasterChef is gonna change forever. Can you, dude, Raw Tina is in the final six. That's psychotic. It's always a twist, always a curveball, and I feel more nervous than I do excited. None of you will be cooking today. What? That's right. All of you, head up to the gallery, please. What? There's something else going on. I think that they're gonna bring someone in to cook. I don't know who that's gonna be. Today, in the MasterChef kitchen, are some familiar faces. The last eight people that we eliminated. What? Huh? What? Please, welcome back, Stacy. That's bullshit, that's bullshit, that's bullshit, that's bullshit. If Martinez gets away with this because a fucking pogger chef ends up doing his uh, cooking, I'm going to lose my mind. Cowboy Mike. Yeah. <laughs> Anna. <laughs> Scott. Yeah. And last but not least. I don't remember who the eighth person was. That was a really long time ago. Ryan. Woo. <laughs> and then there's Ryan. I'm like, oh yeah, this piece of shit. This kitchen has been a better place since he was eliminated. Welcome back. Thank, Thank you, you. Chef. I love the MasterChef kitchen. It's amazing to be walking back in, but um, I'm not sure why I'm here. No cheers. Even the best chefs in the world can have a bad day. Trust me, I've had thousands. It's a shame for anyone to be judged solely on their worst moment and their worst dish. This is our search for America's best home cook. And this is America, a country that has been built on opportunities and second chances. We've invited you all back to the MasterChef kitchen. Yeah, bro, that's what they built the country on. So that one of you can win this. <laughs> a MasterChef apron for one of you. Stop it. This will be your ticket back. Oh my God. It's because Rotinez sucks, bro. I swear to God. If they bring back Tali, I'm quitting the fucking show. Into this competition. <laughs> Whoa. Everything just changed. The flavor elevator is going straight to the penthouse. I am rested and I am ready to come back with a vengeance. The eight of you will now compete in an unprecedented second chance mystery box. The two winners of this challenge will then compete. Why do you think they did this? Why do you think they did this? This is insane. It's like, it's so insane for fucking Ryan, right? Like, Ryan literally got yeeted eight episodes ago, bro. He got yeeted eight episodes ago. Imagine that's eight additional rounds that you got safely through. Head to head, and the winner of that battle will have cooked their way back into this competition. I just got eliminated, so I am earning that apron back no matter what. I am a little pissed right now. Oh, yeah. All eight of you are about to assemble a mystery box. What? Ryan, 
You'll go first in the pantry where you'll choose a single ingredient and place it here. One by one, you'll each take a turn, ending with Stacy, the last person to be eliminated. Once all of you have made your selections, you'll each be given just those eight ingredients, plus the staple pantry box to cook a stunning dish that will keep you in contention of winning a white apron bag. Ryan, are you ready? Yes, chef. Go. I feel like he's gonna choose some wacky ingredient that's just gonna set the tone for like, okay, this guy's a nutball. I feel pretty good about being the first person to pick an ingredient. I get to be in the driver's seat. I wanna try to pick something challenging. Here we go. Portobello mushrooms. Okay. Nut. Uh, wow. Uh, Scott, think smartly. Off you go. All right, guys. Definitely surprised to have this opportunity to actually get. The worst part about this is Tali. Like, <clears throat> the fact that Tali is on this lineup means that no matter what level he's at, if it's not the last guy, you're fucked. Okay? Because what Tali is going to end up doing is he's going to pick like he's going to pick flowers okay no matter what happens he's yeah he's going to like oh yeah this is great we're going to do ice cream like tolly we're making like a savory snack what do you mean ice cream he's like nah we got to do ice cream you just don't understand what my my vision is bro you don't fuck with the vision bro i'm the picasso bro and then he's going to fuck it up regardless and the fact that he's like you know third or fourth implies that it's going to fuck up the entire it's going to fuck up the rest of the uh, setting no matter what back in the game again but we had no time to start formulating the plan i gotta go with what i know what is this called? i went with a really nice stunning pork chop wow Woo! celery mike condensed milk i have a plan wow Tanya. I got white wine vinegar. Uh-oh. The opposite of condensed milk. Tali. What is going on? What should I do to these guys? Uh-oh. Chocolate buttons? Chocolate buttons. Uh, Josh. What is going on? Cowboy Mike is the one who fucked it up with the condensed milk. What the fuck? Bro, these people don't want to win, bro. These people, I did call it. Good luck. Wow. Someone's got to pull a starch, right? What's he bringing? Surely onion. Polly saw the pork chops and thought chocolate. Chocolate buttons on my pork chop. That's what we're going to be doing today. Tomato, garlic, or some spices. What have we got? Oh my god. Pomegranate. Pomegranate. This isn't a mystery box. This is a freak show. <laughs> Stacy, last pick. I'm hoping there's a starch coming. This mystery box. The real mystery is going to be how you're going to use all of these ingredients together. That's right. Fuck. I'm Gordon Ramsay. This box is shape shifting like no other. But I'm smart. I know what I want to do and I'm sticking to it. Hmm. This is key, isn't it? This is going to cement it. Yeah, because so far you have just a bunch of weird accents. You don't have anything to hold it all together. I like it. Here comes the rice. Please. Stace, what have you got? Heavy cream chow. Oh. Oh, man. Dude, everyone <laughs> went mental. This mystery box is total disaster. You got chocolate, condensed milk, celery. It's just a, it's a joke. I love this. Okay, eight eliminated contestants, eight ingredients hand-picked by you all. The two cooks that make the best dishes from those ingredients will fight on and go head-to-head -to, -head to win that elusive apron and join those talented individuals up on the balcony. Your 60 minutes starts now. Good luck. It's literally not even Ryan's fault. To get a second chance in something of this magnitude is almost overwhelming, and I'm ready to rock and roll. I gotta remember where all this is again.
This is the most random assortment of anything you've ever seen. It is as bad as I could have ever dreamed. I, mean, I don't think it could have gotten more difficult than what sure. they picked. What would you do? I would make a puree out of the gills of the mushroom and grill the pork chop and like a little celery salad. I would go for roasted mushrooms, a caramelized pork chop, deglazed with the celery juice and some white wine vinegar. Is Tali using chocolate yet? He's definitely using chocolate. I love competition. I love it. I'm like a feeding frenzy right now. Every time somebody even mentions the word competition, uh, I'll take out anybody here, and then I'll get started on everybody upstairs. What? I think Ryan just doesn't know when to shut up. And for me, Ryan's not a threat. Good. This is the best place to be right now. I'm going to make the most of it. I kind of want Josh to Because he's a really good cook. They probably thought, you know, they were all safe and stuff because I was leaving, but now they're, they're really going to be into um, a world of trouble when I get back. Josh is my biggest competitor. The idea of him coming back is throwing another, like, wrench in my master plan. I think Josh and Stacy will make it. 20 minutes to go, guys. Come on. I'm foaming at the mouth right now. He's such a dingbat, this kid. The flavor elevator's back and we're going up. The last eight eliminated contestants have returned to the MasterChef kitchen for a second Everyone chance else is at a coveted white apron. The two home cooks with the best mystery box dish will then go head to head. Okay, bro, not even as a joke, I want to hear Tali defenders in here being like Tali number one, Tali to the moon. To get back into the competition. I can't wait to see what Mike's got up his sleeve over here. Mike. Yes, Chef. What are you doing? I'm doing something that you would not expect this cowboy to do. I'm going dessert. I'm making a chocolate plan. You don't look like the kind of dainty dessert man <laughs> no, that I would don't. come up with a, a I don't. That's why I'm doing it. Stacy, what are you doing? I made some fresh uh, pasta goat. I'm going to roll out some lasagna sheets into a ravioli. I'm going to keep it real. If Tali comes back, I, I, I this will be my last season of MasterChef. Fresh ricotta. Yes. Fresh pasta, yes. caramelized with pork chop, roasted mushrooms, and making a celery puree. Yes. I mean, I've never seen this from you. I know. How badly do you want that wire from back? I'm fierce, so it's time for me to return and fight my way to the top. Ryan, what are you making? I made a pork chop. I uh, lightly dredged it in flour, salt, and pepper. Who on the balcony doesn't deserve to be there? Definitely David Martinez. Doesn't Martinez? Deserve... He's right. So... Is he wearing your white apron? Oh, he's wearing my white apron. Are you going to get it back today? He's right. I'm definitely getting it back today. I'm not going to stop until I do. I mean, he's literally right. Like, Ryan is not... Ryan is a better chef than David Martinez, so... Most of those people down there, with the exception of Tali, is a better chef than David Martinez. 45 minutes gone. 15 minutes to go. Joshua, how are you feeling? Feeling a great, Chef. You've done desserts. Yes. I'm making a chocolate mousse with the pomegranate sauce. Can this dessert get you back up there on that balcony? Yes, Chef. Who shouldn't be up there? I did not expect to see David Martinez up there. Really? <laughs> He's at you know. I'll go head to head with any one of these people that have said that. You might have to. Wow, the interesting dishes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Pretty impressive. I think it looks like some of the best dishes ever cooked in competition. Yeah. Ever. So what do you guys think? If you were up here, who would you not want to see? Everyone is flaming David harder than David has ever fucking roasted anything. Go up and join you in white. I would not want to see someone of Josh's caliber. I mean, the level of confidence that guy's brain. I wouldn't want to see Stacy back because I would think I just eliminated her a few days ago. To have her back again with her potential would be really unnerving. And Cowboy Mike, you know, he'd made some good food. He could be the dark horse here. Okay, folks, three minutes left. That's where my plan's at right now. Taste everything. Come on, guys. One stunning portion. Oh, that looks good. No? No. Come on! Please! Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and stop. Well done. From here, they look amazing. Already, you guys have gone up a different level. We're looking for the 
two best dishes. But there's only one white apron. All right, Josh, let's see it. From the beginning, I thought that Josh would be in the top five. So I don't want him back in the competition. So. Damn! Everybody's. Uh, Wait, what? Hold up. From the beginning, I thought. Bro, what the f Yo. Yo. Okay, okay, Christine. Yo, Christine's getting feisty, dude. She's getting spicy as fuck now. She's getting comfortable. She's like, yeah, fuck Josh. He's a threat and must be eliminated. In it to win it. Love it. That Josh Queen. would be in the top five. So I don't want him back in the competition. So everybody's uh, kind of scared of you. You coming back in the competition. What did you make here that could intimidate everyone? I made a chocolate mousse with pomegranate reduction sauce with candy lemon peels. Presentation-wise, it's not a work of art. It might not be beautiful to look at, but that tastes amazing. Thanks. And it's so good. Thank you. It tastes absolutely delicious. Thank you. Great job. Thanks, Jonathan. Looks like a proper mousse. You got enough air whipped in there. You think the people up there are rooting against you? Are they intimidated by you as a cook? A little bit. This is great. Thank you. Maybe they should fear you. <laughs> OK, Anna, let's go. I made pan-seared pork chops. It's straight up a fucking crime that Rotinez can look down at Josh from the winner's circle, OK? Like, unacceptable. With sauteed portobello mushroom and a shaved celery and pomegranate salad. Um, visually, Anna, it looks beautiful. Thank you. Great sear on the pork. A little bit overcooked. And it looks like you've sliced it when it's too hot. Um, it's a great shame. It is. Next is Tom. This is chocolate pot de cremes with a little bit of uh, pomegranate syrup, pomegranate seeds, and a little bit of celery foam. If Josh's mousse was a chocolate dream, this is like chocolate mortar. It's very dense, very heavy. Mm. OK, thank you. Scott, please. I pan seared a stuffed pork chop. Then I pickled the celery and made a little. Remember how Dolly was like, I learned my lessons? No, you didn't. You literally didn't learn a single thing. A pomegranate, sweet sauce for everything. Slightly undercooked. However, the flavor and the sear is good. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. Tanya. Hello. Hi, Tanya. I made crispy celery with pork, and I used the leaves as a part of my marinade. I also used the celery with the mushrooms that I made a ragu of with the cream. The cook on the pork is delicious. The mushrooms are really good. But uh, to me, celery fried is just, I don't get it. OK. Thanks. OK. Stacy, let's go. I feel that Stacy is going to come through because she showed a lot of skill in those last 60 minutes. It is a fresh ricotta and roasted portobello mushroom ravioli with roasted celery cream and a pan-roasted pork chop. Off, off. Based on what you've just done in the last 60 minutes, um, you're back with an Avengers. It's delicious. Thank you. How you made ricotta, pasta, cream sauce, roasted pork chop in 60 minutes, I don't know. Potentially, you've got one hand on that white apron. Thank you. Wow. Delicious. This woman wants her shot back in this competition. It's really good, yeah. And that part of me fears that kind of hunger. I'm pretty worried. Called it Stacy versus Josh. 
All right, let's go, Cowboy Mike. Today, the judges brought back the last eight contestants that we've eliminated. All right, Mike, eight. And two of the top dishes will go head to head, and then whoever wins gets to join the group of six again. All right, How are you, welcome Chef? back. Thank you. I'm like, OMG, Batman. I don't want any of them back in the competition. So, Batman? I made a chocolate plant. I incorporated the chocolate into milk, and I've got the zest of a lemon in there to, to give it a little bit of tanginess. Country. Southern zest of a lemon to give it a little bit of tanginess. Condensed milk. Yeah. <laughs> what was the idea with that? I really wanted to do a dessert, something totally OMG, out of OMG, Bat Chest. So you wanted to stand out. I did. What is that? A big beautifully. Looks like a donut. I've never had that before. What is it, a flan? That's really yeah. delicious. Thank you, Chef. Really good job. Yeah. To see you in one hour Fuck. create something like this. Flan? A testament to how far you've come. Thank you, Chef. Good job. Thank you. Proud of you. Thank you. And the flan, you've never cooked it before? I've never cooked a chocolate flan in 60 minutes. It's delicious. Yep, it's very good. Great job. Thank you, Chef, well very much. All right, Mike. Last up, Ryan. This kid, he better not worm his way back into this competition after being gone for so long. Ryan, go yourself. What is it? A pan-seared pork chop with a mushroom and celery ragu with a pomegranate gastrique on the bottom. Are you happy with it? Uh, yes. There's a brashness to you that is like a chef with the cockiness and the arrogance. And when you don't deliver, you're going to get your ass kicked. This time, you delivered. It's delicious. Great sear. You kept it on the bone so it's moist, you know, and you've nailed it. I mean, I think it's one of your best dishes you've cooked here. Good job. Thank you very well much. Well done. Appreciate it. You see, Frank's up there and rolling his eyes at you. But what Frank doesn't realize is how delicious this is. Thank you so much. I think that there's a, a potential in you that sometimes is masqueraded by this seemingly bewildered young man who has no job, probably not doing a whole hell of a lot every day. You know, I spend my time cooking. That's what I do during the day. I love to just experiment with different things. And and I realize that my only limitation is my imagination when I go into the kitchen. I think you have something to Did show Did he pop them. off? <clears throat> Did he pop off, chat? I missed it. I was putting my dishes down. There's a reason why we're all still here, and he's been hanging out in Central Park, feeding birds or something. But the final six that earn our spots here are, without a doubt, better cooks than Ryan. Very awesome. Was that one of the best pork chops? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was good, actually. With all Sadly. the dishes tasted, it was more like a garnish. Didn't make sense. The judges will now decide which two of the eight returning home cooks will go head to head for a chance to re-enter the Master Chef competition. Okay. <clears throat> the content brain in me wants, obviously, Ryan to fucking have a shot at redemption, so he like becomes the main villain. But my soul still says Josh. Well, let's get one thing right. It's certainly gone up a level, let me tell you. Well done. Thank you. <clears throat> Can the following four people step forward? Tali. Oh, it's over. Tanya. Th these are the losers. Anna. <clears throat> Scott. They know. They know they're done. They're out. They're fucking you cut. You four have shown that you are truly great home cooks. But unfortunately not Today, master chefs. Great is not quite good enough. We have to say goodbye to all four of you. Goodbye. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you very much. <clears throat> okay. Stay like when they call out Tali and then they say your name next, you know it's over. You took the L. You know what I mean?
the moment that they called out Tali, and then every other name that was called out, they were like, yeah. Uh, GG's, I guess. You know, this is no shot, right? <laughs> see, Josh, Mike, Ryan. This has been a very tough decision. Mike, Ryan, step forward, please. One of you staying, and one of you's going home. Number one person I'm rooting for is Mike, because Mike's my homeboy. I want Ryan to come back just so I could be the one to hammer that last nail into his coffin. I don't think that kid could- David, what the fuck are you talking about, bro? Bro, learn to cook, dog. Learn to fucking cook first, okay? Cook a food that is not raw. Dumbass. Cook his way out of a microwavable popcorn bag. Ryan. Any one of those four will eliminate Raw Tinez. Any one of them. Straight up. Any one of those four will absolutely destroy David the next round. It doesn't matter. It, Ryan, all of them. They're better chefs than he is. Automatically. Unless they... Unless he meant, like, literally kill him with raw food. Okay? Unless David Rotinez was talking about, I'm gonna put the final nail in his coffin by feeding him my raw food, and then he dies. <laughs> you are staying in the MasterChef competition. Good job, big man. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right, Mike. All right, Mike. Take care. Good luck, y'all. I feel amazing right now. I feel like I've gotten a second lease on life. I don't want to sound overconfident, but I think I'm the best chef, including the ones who are already up there. Stacy, Josh, one of no. you is leaving, and one of you is going head to head against Ryan to compete to join those six. I just want to point out, I didn't do a Graham Fit check, but I really should have because Graham took business up front, party in the back to the next level. Okay, first of all, the tightest of vests, once again. Not a single blazer in sight. He has never worn a blazer in his... This man will never wear a blazer, okay? Blazers can find him. He will never wear that. But look at, the, look at the vest. The front of the vest is black. The back of the vest... And this is, by the way, there's a reason for the way that the vest looks this much. Uh, it looks like this. Is straight up a party, okay? Why? Because that's supposed to be worn with a fucking blazer, okay? Never that, though. He's balance. an animal. Based on performance, I think that Stacy deserves to come right back in the game where she left off. I want Josh to beat Ryan into oblivion. I'm really hoping that it's Stacy. The person that's going head to head with Ryan. I think Josh is the better cook. It's gotta be Stacy. I mean, she deserves it. I think Josh takes it. That person will be. <laughs> Stacy. It should be Stacy versus Josh. One of you is leaving, and one of you is going head to head against Ryan to compete. It should be Stacy versus Josh. Those six. But Josh it's gonna be dangerous because it's gonna be Josh he versus Ryan. Competition, he becomes an immediate threat. I think Stacy really wants this, and she just got eliminated, so <laughs> she's got a lot to prove. That person will be Joshua. Oh, oh Stacy, another gallant effort. You're just gonna get better and better and better. I plan on it. Chef. Love, Love you, Stacy. Damn, bro, imagine getting eliminated on the last round only to come back and get eliminated again. That's what we call an accidental flex, okay? She didn't, she didn't ask to be flexed on so hard. But then Gordo was like, no, 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 come back. Flex on him again! Which sucks because it should have been her versus Josh. Tonight. The worst of all, though, is that the number one flexican is standing... On that fucking balcony up there, David, by God, it's motherfucking Rotinez, okay?
He's just he's just up there. Stacy's better. It's fucking bullshit. You now have a 50-50 chance of re-entering the world's biggest culinary competition. I think it's safe to say that the pressure is on. Get your game face on. I'm gonna whoop Ryan's ass, man. This is gonna be the culinary battle of his life. There's one dish. Okay. You, tiny brain, think that Josh was, uh, you know, eliminated and they only had to bring people back for this episode because there was a double elimination. Me, five head, they secretly fake planned Josh for to be eliminated only to come back because Paula Dean was going to be on an episode and they couldn't censor the amount of slurs that she would say in Josh's presence. There you go. Notice how the only episode that Josh was absent on is the episode where notorious N-word sayer Paula Dean was on. I'm just saying, dude. Among Us. That separates you from success or failure. That dish is a glorious fruit tart. Instant happiness with Josh's face and fear in Ryan's. I think Josh versus Ryan in this challenge is gonna be a slaughterhouse of horrors because Ryan got sent home on a dessert. That's not wet Josh. fruit. Fruit tart is not wet fruit. Come on, chat. You know there's a difference between wet fruit and fruit tart, okay? Fruit tart is fine. It's like somewhat edible. Is there, and Also, there's a baking process there. There's also like a custardy thing that you put in it. Like, wet fruit is when you, like, put, fucking dip a pear in water and you're like, this is a dessert. This challenge is all about flavor and creativity. There are no limits on your interpretation of this classic dessert. But it's not us you'll have to impress. We have some special guest judges. With, uh... What? I'd say very, very refined palates. Say hello... Not Paula Deen, not Paula Deen, don't do it. To your six judges. Oh, no. Dude, Ryan is, okay, that's fucking, okay. Ryan is so fucked. Dude, come on. Oh, no, that's, it's a wrap, dude. It's a wrap. No fucking shot, even though he's the worst cook. Look at his face. Oh, like, holy crap. One, I'm incredibly honored. Two, I'm a little nervous because I know those judges are going to be looking at us to make sure that we know what we're talking about. Yeah, we should just skip the rest of this. We already know what's going to happen. <laughs> like, the only difference here is that Ryan is not as talented as Josh as a chef. So, like, if they pick Ryan, they're going to pick him because it's a, it's a smart strategy. But of course, Ryan is such an unlikable dog shit person that they're just going to keep, they're going to pick Josh, who is more talented anyway, because again, that's how fucking annoying Ryan is and no one wants to be around him. A slice from each of your tarts and vote. <laughs> oh, it's blind? One. Being able to judge food in MasterChef Kitchen is an honor. I'm expecting Bobby Flay or Jean Georges to come walking through the door. And then he drops a bomb on us that the six dopes upstairs are going to be judging my food. It will be a totally blind taste test. So they will not know like, Ryan like that is whose. I think that makes it fair. And you know what? The other contenders will now see what I do every day, judging the texture and taste profiles. Your fate is now in their hands. I think my palate has come a really long way since being on MasterChef. So I'm pretty stoked about this today. Make your way through to the MasterChef restaurant. Thank you. Plus, this is a MasterChef first. So we really, really have to put our minds to this and prove that we have what it takes. Josh, Ryan, welcome to Culinary Thunderdome. <laughs> Everything that you need. Okay, Graham, fucking chill. You're making fruit tarts, homie. Jesus Christ. You made it seem like they're duking it out to death. Welcome to culinary like look at how serious he is bro look at oh my god look at this blazer bro the patterns i didn't even know that there were patterns on it he's got the checkered blazer front in the back it's just all blue shiny as fuck 
Then on top of that, he's got the striped black shirt, okay? Striped black shirt. Always, always got the fucking undershirt, you know? Always. Every Thunderdome. Everything that you need to make a basic fruit tart is already at your station in front of you. Any other ingredients are available to you in the limited pantry. You can make any kind of fruit tart you want. Hair looking abysmal. Any ingredient. You can finish it with any kind of fruit. You've both got 90 minutes. Are you ready? Yes, yes chef. chef. Your time starts now. Good luck. It's the culinary battle of my life. I'm more motivated than ever to pursue this dream. I got a second chance, which is completely unheard of, and I'm ready to fight. This is the biggest opportunity in my life, but I've never made a fruit tart before, so I would have a lot to prove at this moment. Oh, the secret of a great tart for me is the perfect crust. Do they go short crust or do they go sweet paste? I think it depends on your topping. Because if you're going like a more fragrant topping, I would say more butter crust. I mean, that crust is the foundation, right? Yeah, you know, it has to rest and set in the fridge and then put it into the mold. Mm -hmm. I mean, you want a firm base because it has to take the weight, not only of the pastry cream, but of the fruit on top of it. This tart is like the most important thing in my life right now. I mean, I already beat Ryan's ass once in the dessert challenge. I mean, it's on the right that I do it again. Culinary <laughs> Thunderdome. Two men enter, one man leave. He's a great competitor, but he's got to go home today. How is your Ryan sounds a bit like Mark Wahlberg, ass. but what like whinier. He used a lot of exotic ingredients. One you man know, leaves, two men enter, one trees. man leaves. That fruit is too hot. He's going it's home hard. today. You've destroyed it. The pastry cream, how are you flavoring that? I'm going to flavor it with a little bit of vanilla. Good luck. Thank you. Ryan, you left here on a bloody dessert last time. This guy kicked your ass. Is it a double victory for him again tonight? Not a chance. Talk to me about the tart. What are you doing? I'm going to do a fresh berry tart with a blood orange pastry cream. How desperate are you to get back in this competition? There's a few times in somebody's life when they have an opportunity like this, and this one's mine, and I'm, I'm not willing to let it pass me by. Good luck. Thank you very much. Good luck. Guys, halfway there. Two tarts, but only one white apron. Your six judges are eagerly awaiting your dishes, which they will blind taste. Make sure this is a magnificent fruit tart. You know, waiting in that restaurant is pretty intense, man. We're going to be handing someone their dream back. In the end, even though I don't care for Ryan, I know that this is his dream, as well as I know that this is Josh's dream. I think they're really both fighting for their lives, and the best man is going to win here because it's a blind taste test, and I'm looking forward to it. What Tango Sparks making mango tarts. Oh, my God. Chatter. You're right. For those of you who don't know, that man's name now is no longer Ryan. It's Mango Sparks. What's the deal behind pastry cream? If the pastry cream is too weak, the fruit will bleed through it and turn the pastry soggy. For the topping, are you going for visual impact or are you going for the practicality of cutting the tarts? What would you put on top of a fruit tart? Something soft, nothing with a skin on it. No. It's all about the knife going through. I don't want anything to catch on that blade and then run through and destroy the tart. Here we go. The crust is the backbone to this. Did I say mango sparks? Tart. If the crust is good, spark. the rest of it's gonna stink also. So I need to get the crust in as quickly as possible. Your tart bases should be in the oven by now. Josh, let's go. Come on. Um, looking at Josh, it looks like he's moving too slow. Come on, what's going on? Should have been in 20 minutes ago. Come on, get it in the oven, please. Uh oh! Don't put pressure on him, dude. Let him do his thing. Let him let him do his I'm thing. I'm right now because I should have had my pastry crust done, but I took a little bit too much time cutting the exotic fruit. I'm nervous for Josh now, rolling out his pastry. It was crumbling apart. It was almost like patchwork. It looked like some jigsaw. Ryan's crust, on the other hand, looked perfect. Looked amazing. Really amazing. 
really gonna come down to the wire. I'm just hoping it gets cooked through and hopefully it's done. This has to be the best dish I ever made in this kitchen. Otherwise, I'm going back home and that's not what I want to do. Exactly 15 minutes to go. Come on. Where's your crust? My crust is in the oven. It's not cooked yet? Uh, probably have 10 more minutes. How are you gonna cool it in time? That's the question. Come on, dude! 18 minutes gone and 10 minutes to go. Tonight. Choking like LeBron right now. Goat, but also choker. Okay, not good. Josh and Ryan are going head to head in a bid to return to the Master Chef kitchen. No, this has you to be a Hail start. Mary. Putting these tarts together. In a blind taste test, the six remaining contestants will judge which fruit tart is the best, and the winner will join them back in the competition. This is the first time the winner tonight is out of our hands. I mean, it's going in to this palette of the six remaining contestants. They don't know whose is whose. This is purely based on that slice of tart that's in front of them. It's looking good. I just got a little patch right there, but it'll set and it'll cool. My hands are shaking right now, and I'm having a hard time maneuvering these small fruits. This is a pretty delicate thing to do, and I'm not the most delicate of people. Oh, my tart is way better than his. Just gotta let it cool off some. Confirm casual NBA fan. Oh, yeah, because I said LeBron's a choker. The choker? LeBron's not a choker anymore. Fuck you, dude, right? Is that right? Seven minutes left. I gotta go. The most technical? cook out there right now is Josh. But I mean, Ryan looks in front. 100%. Just on his management of the fruit, he's using whole berries, very classic. Josh's mistakes are so grave at this point. I mean, this is a bad spot to be in. If Josh pulls this off with the exotic fruit, think about the textures. Right. I mean, he could nail it. 60 seconds to go. <clears throat> Come on. Latanky. Finishing touches, guys. You need to knock your opponent out to stay in this competition, guys. Josh, concentrate on yours. Here we go. 10, 9, 8, 7, Bro, six, does he not have glaze? Five, 4, 3, 2, 1, and stop. Wow. Bro, Ryan fucking popped off on this dude. This is fucked up i hate to admit it now very carefully bring the tarts down to the front bench please oh wow look at that i'm looking down at my dish and i'm thinking i have a real clear shot of winning this and the dream to get my cooking school started is real and i literally have a shot at it nice I've always dreamed of opening up my own food cart dude, in New York City. Dude, he fucking banged on that, dude. I know dude. that if I win this challenge, I think I can win it all. I'm also looking at Ryan's uh, uh, crust. And Ryan's crust also does not look... Honey Mountain Dew, thank you for the tank of the subs. Ryan's crust also does not look brown. How'd you feel? Feeling great. Good. Two individual tarts from here. We all think they both look good, let me tell you. Very carefully, slice your fruit tarts and present six stunning slices. Oh, they're making them? It's crucial now. Yeah. I mean, the baking's half of it. Keep putting it together, now being able to cut into it. Oh, my that God. fruit is too hard. It compresses the pastry cream, and it just helps to split. Doesn't matter how sharp your knife no. is. Oh, my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my Two God. Good first slices, That's, man. I would fuck this up. Like, I mean, even if I somehow figured out a way to fucking make the tart, I would absolutely, I've never been able to cut something like that properly. Ryan was clearly the underdog coming in, but it doesn't look like that to me anymore. Oh my God. Oh no. Oh no. Some of those slices are sloppy, now, bro. Your six slices are going to be served to our judges. Sit patiently and await. Your fate. Good job, both of you. Oh no, I just, I hope that Ryan's tart has like a soggy bottom or something like that. I really, really, really hope that it just fucking sucks. I really hope Ryan's tart just like tastes terrible. What's the color of the crust? 
like a light golden brown, light golden brown, okay. I'm a little nervous about doing the taste test because I know that two people's futures depend on a decision that I have input with. Chad thought blind taste test meant that they were wearing fucking uh, blindfolds. It's actually my favorite dessert. I eat a lot of it. I'm, you know, pretty good judge of them at home, so why not judge them in MasterChef Kitchen? The top six contestants have been given the task of judging which fruit tart is best based purely on presentation and taste. They're both pretty nice. And it looks like there's some better knife work on this one. The pastry cream's pretty nice. It's really close. Oh, no. It's over. Yoshino cherries. I think it's a little strange to use that in a fruit tart. Yes! Yes! Exactly! Why would you put cherries in a fucking fruit tart, weirdo? Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's what I'm talking about. That's actually a good call, Christine. Go off, go off, Queen. Cherries, man, might get you. I think they might get me to the next round. I think it might get you back to New York City. It's not cooked fully, and then once you cut it, there's no, it doesn't make any noise. It's like bread. This one, nice crust. It's falling apart though. I Damn, <laughs> Frank wasn't lying. He's like an expert judge of root tart, apparently. The visual on this tart, uh, I think the knife cuts are beautiful, and I love the combination. Why are they whispering? It's kind of cool. I guess they don't want to, like, you know, give each other uh, talking points or something. Like, they don't want to influence other people's decisions or something, but, like, it's kind of cool. The whisper ASMR. Tropical fruit. On this tart, I did care for the pastry cream, and you can tell there was a lot of skill involved. Hopefully they make the right decision and I could be here cooking next week. Hopefully the better man will win this one and the flavor elevator will be rising to the next level. This one could have been put together with a little bit more finesse. This one could be a little bit more custard. You got a little bit of sweetness, not too much. This one's definitely a little bit sweeter but i don't understand some of the components on here i really don't want to yeah you don't because you're david fucking rotinez and apparently you're even bad at eating how is that possible david just shut the fuck up and just eat your tart okay eat your tart you got one more episode david okay god damn it why are you even there fuck how are you overweight and don't even have good taste buds bro what the fuck you just like overweight for no reason? How is that possible? Jesus Christ. I go back to New York City. I feel like I have a lot of unfinished business here to take. What do you mean, Azan? Don't be fat phobic. I'm a fat ass, okay? And I got good ass taste buds. At least like it's worth it. You know what I mean? What the fuck? There's a reason. Okay? I love food. Care of. Oh, God. In the infamous words of Tom Petty, the waiting is the hardest part. It's pretty Being much unbearable. Being fat doesn't give you a right to fat shame. Shut the fuck them out. Okay. Like, Using fat as a pejorative is one thing, okay? Using fat as a pejorative is one thing. But, like, saying fat people like food is not fat shaming, dude. What the fuck? It's not even a bad thing. It's a good thing. What the fuck are you crying about right now? Terrible sitting there with your entire future hanging in the balance. This moment is super intense. You could just smell the tension. It's crazy. Already trending on Twitter. This moment that I do have the winning dish and that I am going to pull this off. Right there in that room really lies my existence in this competition. Hopefully the judges made the right decision. Oh, 
Oh shit, it's coming, baby. The two tarts have been judged, and the results are in. That was low, even for Josh you, Azan. We're about to find out which one of them is back in the competition to become America's next Master Chef. I want this so bad. They have no idea what this means to me right now. I'm just hoping for the best. You never get second chances like this. It means the world to me. I am ready to come back with a vengeance. Josh, Ryan, the decision has been made. Congratulations to... Come on, dude. You know an ad break is coming right before this decision. Like, you think... If it, it, it's literally perfect at 4.59, top of the hour, I mean, I have to take it. Like, I literally, I see the ad break lead up sound, the music, I'm going to do it. And obviously, if you want a fucking uninterrupted after broadcasting experience, you want to know the decision, you know, all this other stuff, Kismet. It is Kismet. Thank you, Chatter. And all you need to do is subscribe. Get gifted a sub. Uh, like, uh, Ivan Elias Young just gifted you. Maybe you got lucky, but if you're not lucky, then you got to make your own luck. Subscribe on your own for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime. And if not, then GG's, you know what I mean? But here's the one minute ad break now, boys. <laughs> Dono Man 812, thank you for the 10 terror gift subs. Battle Crab with the five gifted subs. I love that Gordo is doing the Jebate uh, face as well. Emily Platt, thank you for the two give the subs. Anton XO Nook, thank you for the 10 give the subs. Yeah, he's doing the You Got Jebated. <sighs> oh, man. I mean, listen, I learned from the best. Eat the Ritz, thank you for the five gifted. I learned from the best. I learned from Gordo. You know, that's what I learned from. Oh, wait, I forgot to run the ad break. Oh, shit. Okay, well, running it now. Just kidding. I already ran the ad break, bitch. Oh, get double jebated, get triple jebated, get quadruple jebated. The ad break is already over. Let's get started. Hey. Thank you, Kate Coles. And left this vet for the value of the subs. That's right, I fucking the ran it. Have and I waited. And voted individually without knowing who made which fruit tarts. Let's start with you, Monty. Which one did you prefer? I think the tart that was prepared with the tropical fruit, the knife cuts were beautiful. The pasty cream was obviously chilled well before it was placed on the tart, and the tart itself was only about a quarter of an inch thick, which is about as thick as a tart shell should be. Look at you. I mean, it's like a dialogue of a fruit critic with the New York Times. Becky, visually, which one had the biggest impact? I think the berry tart had more visual impact because it was more delicately put together. Interesting. Now you're about to find out. So part of the fucking fruit tart is supposed to be that it's like fresh fruit, right? Um, and that's supposed to pop off. So when you fucking put that cherry that you put on top of ice creams, or whatever the fuck it's called, it, I feel like it catches people by surprise. Now, it can pan out well, right? People could look at that and go, that's, oh, oh, that was like a fun little uh, twist that I was not expecting. But I feel like most people don't, would not be a fan of that. Because it's just like a cherry soaked in fucking syrup and it's not, it's not like fresh fruit. You know what I mean? It's called a maraschino cherry. Yeah. And it, it, it kills the tartness. The only sweetness on a tart is supposed to come from the glaze and also the custard. Who you have decided. I'll be coming back to challenge you in the biggest culinary competition in the world. I hope Ryan comes back in so I could send his ass back out. If Josh comes back in the competition, I think he's gonna fight tooth and nail to get to the top and do his very best to knock us all out. Six, zero, unanimous. Returning with his white MasterChef apron back on. Please welcome back. 
Josh. Got it messed up now. Oh, man, they have no idea what's coming for him. I cook circles around Ryan, and I'm more focused than ever. I'd like to say to the remaining seven contestants. All right, it's not a surprise. We were expecting that. But now I really think Josh will win because anybody who could take out the flavor elevator. Oh, my God, bro. Leave it up to Ryan to, like, not lose gracefully. Okay. Deserves to be the next master chef. It's time to tighten it up, guys. You are in a serious battle. Man, that kid is not fussing around. You can see it in his face. This is going to be fierce. From here on in, no more second chances. There can only be one master chef. Next time we walk into that kitchen, the gloves are off. We're all bringing our A game. Josh, congratulations. The remaining six cooks should definitely fear me. They want a challenge, they're going to get one. Trust me. Yeah. Tomorrow.